my name is Edie. Welcome to River of Life Church, and we hope you're blessed. thank you that you are the great I am. Father, you're the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, you're Alpha and Omega, you are the beginning and the end. I thank you that you're Elohim and El Shaddai. I thank you, Father God, that you're El Royai. Father, that you're our provider, Lord, and Jehovah. I thank you as Jehovah Jireh, you're our provider. As Jehovah Seek Canute, Lord, you are our righteousness. Lord, I thank you that you are Jehovah Rapha, you're our healer. <laughs> and I thank you, God, that you have come to set the captives free today. I thank you, God, that you have come to bind up the brokenhearted according to the word of God. I thank you, Father God, that you are here to bring change to your people in Jesus' name. So, God, we just surrender ourselves to you today, spirit, soul, and body. And we just ask you, God, to come. Holy Spirit. Spirit, come in the name of Jesus and change this place. Yeah. Change us, God. Yeah. In Jesus' name, all God's people said, yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. High five, somebody else. Sit down. I will worship. I will bow. today <laughs> he's here yes. amen. Amen. amen hallelujah listen if you would turn with me to first chronicles chapter 28 the bibles are all the same in here somebody will holler out the page number so you can see what's being said amen, amen. did everybody come expecting today yes. mm -hmm. <laughs> Thursday night was awesome. Mm -hmm. Amen. You know, we never um, actually had the, it go the way that it did Thursday night, but it was awesome. Um, Rob and Chanel, who are friends of mine from Kalamazoo, came up, and they brought Raina. Raina and R Rob lead the praise and worship at their church. And who would think that you could have that kind of worship with a guitar? Yeah. Right? I mean, it rocked the house all night long. I mean, we, um, I think Bear put up an hour and 20 minutes of video. It was longer than that. So all we did was worship. There was some word given as far as words to people and different things like that. But I'll tell you, the Lord just wanted to fill us up. Amen. I mean, he's in the business of changing us because he is the life giver, right? Yes. So um, one of the things this morning I want to um, talk about is in, in chapter 28 of First Chronicles, it's Solomon is instructed to build the temple. And so I'm going to read this, but um, oh, I'm not going to read the whole thing because it's like how many... How can I? That's 21. Wow, it looks bigger on my page because I have it blowed up because I can see this way. <laughs> all right. So now David assembled at Jerusalem all the leaders of Israel, the officers of the tribes and the captains, cap, 
captains of the divisions who served the king, the captains over thousands and captains over hundreds, and the stewards over the substance and the possessions of the king and his sons, with the officials, the valiant men, and all the mighty men of valor. Then King David rose to his feet and said, Hear me, my brethren and my people. So King David is speaking. I had it in my heart to build a house of rest for the ark and the covenant of the Lord, for the footstool of our God that had made preparations and had made preparations to build it. But God said to me, You shall not build a house for my name because you have been a man of war and have shed blood. However, the Lord God of Israel chose me above all the house of my father to be king over Israel forever. And he has chosen Judah to be the ruler. And of the house of Judah, the house of my father, and among the sons of my father, he was pleased with me to make me king over Israel. And of all my sons, for the Lord has given me many sons. He has chosen my son Solomon to sit on the throne of the kingdom of the Lord over Israel. Now he said to me, it is your son Solomon who shall build my house and my courts. For I have chosen him to be my son, and I will be his father. Moreover, I will establish his kingdom forever if he is steadfast to observe my commandments and my judgments as it is in this day. Now, therefore, in the sight of all Israel, the assembly of the Lord and the hearing of our God, be careful to seek out all the commandments of the Lord your God, that you may possess this good land and leave it as an inheritance for your children after you forever. As for you, my son Solomon, know the God of your father and serve him with a loyal heart <coughs> and with a willing mind. <coughs> For the Lord searches all hearts and understands all the intent of the thoughts. If you seek him, you will be found, you, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will cast you off forever. Consider now, for the Lord has chosen you to build a house for the sanctuary. Be strong and do it. And I'm just going to stop right there for a minute because the, the, the scripture that God pulled out of this was nine. As for you, my son Solomon, know the God of your father and serve him with a loyal heart and with a willing mind. So God is not only, he's not only instructing Solomon to serve him with a loyal heart, but a willing mind. And sometimes you can have a loyal heart, but your mind is all over the place. Do you understand that? And God wants us to understand that the mind is part of the soul, which means you have a choice. You might have a heart's desire to serve God with everything that is within you, but you're allowing your mind to overtake your heart, your inner man, your heart and the word of God is about your inner man, your inner being, who you are from the core. You understand that? So it's important that you understand, first of all, whose you are, if you are a child of the king or if you're not. And if you're not, I have good news for you today. Today would be your day. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. And so, it, you know, he's telling Solomon to know the God of his father, which was David, but his, and, and David's God, of course, was God, the father. The son had not come yet, but he was still within the father and the Holy Spirit. So God is God, a trinity, always from the beginning. It says, in the beginning was the word. And the word, of course, in the New Testament became flesh, which is Jesus. So he was in the beginning. He was never not part of creation. He was always there. <laughs> Amen? Yeah. So it's important <coughs> that we not only serve him with a loyal heart, but with a willing mind. Is your mind willing to serve God today? 
Is your mind willing to do what the Lord has asked you to do? Because sometimes his order is kind of tall, and we're like, oh, my gosh, I don't know that I'm ready. Well, maybe you're not, but if God is moving you to it, he'll see you through it. If he's calling you to it, he's going to see you through it. But you got to be willing to take that step out, step out of your flesh and into the spirit and allow God to do what he wants to do in and through you. It might cost you something, but it's not anything that you'll ever really miss, really, really. You'll never really miss it. You might have episodes or moments of a flicker of like, oh, I used to. But oh my goodness, I don't ever want to go back and be what I used to be and do what I used to do. Amen? So I want you to understand that you need to get your heart lined up with God. And not only do you need to get our hearts lined up with God, but we need to have a willing mind. In other words, if you allow the Lord to become the Lord of your life and he starts to well up inside of you, you'll start to operate in the mind of Christ instead of the mind of you. In other words, if you allow God to become the God of every aspect of your life, you will be able to do what he's asking you you to do. You understand that? Yep. Amen. Right. Sometimes I don't want to, <laughs> but he always wins the wrestling match. Yeah. Yeah. Always. And I'm glad that he does because I wouldn't want it to be any other way. I'm glad that he causes me to change. I'm glad that sometimes when I don't want to move, something's behind me, which is called the Holy Spirit, and he's pushing me to keep going forward when I want to dig in. I don't really want to dig in, but my mind is saying, just stop. You don't need to do this anymore. Don't you get it? Don't you get it? Don't you get it? And that would be the voice of the enemy trying to stop me from being in the heart of God, from serving him with everything that is within me. We all have the same battles. They're in our minds. But I want you to understand that your mind needs to be willing for the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Last night we had an ordination here. Bill and Lori's church ordained a prophet and a, and a pastor. And uh, um, Pastor John... Ashan from Africa was here, and we met him when we were in Africa a few years ago. So it was good to see him again. And one of the things that he talked about, you know, was the righteousness of God and that how the world is today. You know, the world doesn't want to do what the word says. You know, and a lot of times it, he was saying <coughs> last night that if you just do what God says, if you obey God, if you do what he says, He's going to be there with you, even if the whole world or your whole realm of friends is not doing what you're doing, but God has called you to do the right thing. You need to do the right thing because the Holy Spirit will show up yeah. <coughs> and give you the strength that you need to stand, right? Yes. So one of the things we've been talking a lot about here is love and the deception of love and how the love of this world casts you to the curb, kicks you to the curb, and lets you down over and over again. But the love of God does not do that. But a lot of times we think that the love of God is like the love of the world and it stops us from going forward in the things of the Lord. Because we think that the love of the world is what God's love looks like. It does not. And that's why we need to be transformed so that we can love people right. So that we can do what God has asked us to do. Amen. And the word of God says that if you love me, you will obey me. Right? And if you obey him, he will manifest himself to you. Amen. Because that's what he says. And the word is truth no matter what anybody else says. It will always be here. It will never, ever pass away. And so we need to get it in our minds. Our minds need to be renewed. Our minds need to line up with the heart of God, with the desires of God, with the word of God. And sometimes we get it, but we don't get it. But what you do is you keep going forward. Amen? Amen. It's important that we allow God to love us. He created us. Amen. This morning when we were in worship prior to service, I was in the back. And it was like God was saying, you know, just to worship me, just lift up your hands and just worship me. And, and the thing is, is one of the things he said is, do you believe me? I mean, really, do you believe what you're singing? Do you believe it? Or are you starting to be transformed? Because either way is on the good, good road to be in, right? But the thing is, is that God is transforming us. 
But it's by the power of his love, not a man's love or a woman's love or the world's love. It is by the power of God's love. He will never give up on us. Love will cast out fear. Love covers. It doesn't expose you. It covers you. You don't have to be ashamed. You know, it's like that song that we were singing about break those chains, you know, we're doing it during greeting time right now, but it talks about the chains and, and how those chains are broken because Jesus Christ is the chain breaker. Amen. He's the only one. Right. He's the only one. And I want you to know today that if you're caught up in your mind and your mind is going places it shouldn't go, then get, surrender your mind to the Lord. Every morning, Lord, I give you my soul, which is your mind, will, and emotions. And I submit unto your spirit. I pray, Lord, I give you my, I pray the soul out. My body, my mind, I speak of my heart. I, I give it to you, God. I surrender all. Because I know that if I go and think in my own mind to the old way of thinking instead of allowing God to keep me in the new way of thinking, it would be a short period of time and I would start going backwards. So I need to have a willing mind mm -hmm. to serve God. And you are the one that is over your mind. You understand that? Mm -hmm. The mind is a powerful thing. <clears throat> but God says that to be loyal in your heart and to serve him with a willing mind. It says that for the Lord searches all hearts, not just some, all hearts, and understands all the intent of thoughts. He's the only mind reader there is. I mean, I might read your mail once in a while, but that's only because I'm empowered by the Holy Spirit. But I really don't know anything when it comes to that kind of stuff, but I know his voice and I just yield to him and allow him to be who he is through me. Right. But he is the one that searches your thoughts and he searches your hearts and he searches your lives and it's all for your good and for the kingdom Amen. of heaven and for the glory of God and to God be all the glory. Amen? Amen. Never to a man or a woman. It says that that he will, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will cast you off forever. So you can't tell me that you can't find God. Because the word says if you really seek him, you can find him. And the word is truth. You can find him. He might not always be as loud as he was three weeks ago, but that doesn't mean he's not there with you. Maybe you're able, it's like a baby child, and you're teaching this child how to walk, and you're hanging on to his hands, and he's smiling, and he's taking a step, and he's Googling at you, and all that stuff, and, and he's, as long as you got his hands, he's doing great, but then you let go of his hands, and now he's like this, and you take a step back, and then he's reaching out for you, and you take another step back, but you are calling him to come to you. But you keep stepping backwards so the child keeps walking. That's us. Just because he's not hanging onto your hand at that moment, he's before you. And he's saying, listen, you got this one now. I'm going to show you you can walk in it now. Your heart's been changed. Your mind's been changed. Keep walking toward me. You don't have to feel the grip of my hands anymore. You just have to keep your eyes on me because you're going to come to me. Come on. Come on. Do you get that? Yes. Do you get that? God says if you seek him, you'll be found by him. He will find you. You will find him. There's nothing greater than the presence of the Lord. Nothing greater than the presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen. In Jeremiah 29, please go there. Somebody will holler out the page number. Yeah. Hey, Jeremiah 29 <clears throat> and we're going to go down to verse 11 and many of you have heard this verse and many of you have not heard it until today <clears throat> but it says for I know the thoughts that I think toward you says the Lord 
So God says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not evil. So where does evil come from? Devil. That's right. It comes from hell. It comes from the devil. Because God, is, his thoughts towards us is peace. Yeah. It's life. It's prosperity. Maybe not in, in this kind of prosperity, but peace and love. And having a sense of belonging and knowing that we're loved. I mean, you can have everything in the world, all the materialistic things, and be the most miserable person there is because you were created to be loved by God. And you were created to love others. But you can't love others until you love yourself. And you can't love yourself until you've received the love of God. And once you receive the love of God and he comes into your heart and he takes possession of you, and change starts to take place, you start, you have a battle within. Because God starts showing you the things about you that aren't of him anymore. And he will take you to a place to change them, but he'll do it. The word says he'll cause you. I like that. Because it takes a lot of responsibility off from me. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <clears throat> but... He really does cause you. It's like all of a sudden your desires start to change and you want to do the things that God is asking you to do instead of doing the things that your flesh wants to do. But you got to, come on, I'm not hanging on to your hands anymore. You know what you got to do. I've walked with you. Now you got to do it. Come on. Come on. You can do it. You can do it. So he knows the thoughts that he has for us, the thoughts of peace and not evil, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me, and I will listen to you. So once he listens to you and he says, and you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all of your heart. So you have a responsibility. I have a responsibility to seek out God, to seek out the love of God, to be in a place wanting more of him. And this helps build that up, right? Coming together, singing praise and worship. Thursday night was a worship night, fire night, different things that we do. Bible study, it helps keep us hungry for more things of the Lord. Get connected. Get involved. If you can get involved, it will help you grow. When you're all by yourself, that's where the enemy comes in, and he beats that crap out of you. He tells you all the old stuff about you. And maybe they're not true anymore, but maybe they were. But the thing is, is if you don't know how to battle him, then you find somebody that does know how to battle him, and you come into agreement, and you learn how to not accept a lie, but to walk in the truth of what God says about you and about me. Amen? Amen. Yep. So he says, if you seek me, you'll find me. And when you search for me with all your heart, I will be found by you, says the Lord, and I will bring you back from your captivity. Now that tells me that I was free once, and he's bringing me back to the place that I need to be, right? Yeah. Unless I'm reading it wrong, but that's what I'm getting out of it today. Tomorrow I might get something else because it's the living word of God. But he says, I will be found by you, says the Lord, and I will bring you back from your captivity. Amen. Think about that. I'm thinking there's some people in the room. Jane Breaker. Yeah, you're right. They need to be brought back to their rightful place with the Lord. That you've walked away from him. That you started being controlled more about your mind and the wants of the world and the way that things look versus the desires of your heart. At night, when everybody's gone and you're alone, you think about, God, why do I keep doing the things that I don't want to do? What I really know to do right, but I keep doing wrong. If that's you today... At the end of this service, I'm going to invite you up to be prayed for, and I'm going to invite you up to the altar. Sometimes we just have to be taken back from captivity. Amen. Maybe sickness and disease or losing a loved one or something like that. You know, you're downtrodden. It says to be careful with your hope. 
Because if your hope gets deferred and your hope isn't in the Lord and it gets deferred toward people, places, and things and something happens to them, our hearts get sick. Our inner man might stop believing. I will tell you that you can walk away from God. I used to believe that I could never walk away from God. Well, he didn't let go of me, thank you, Jesus. Because I did walk away a couple times. But I mean, you can truly choose to walk away. There's a lot of scriptures in the word that says I've walked away, I'm walking away. Or they came out from among us. And they now preach doctrines that are not from God, but doctrines of demons. They came out from among us, the people of the Lord. So I want you to know that if you receive Jesus as your Savior at the age of five and you can't remember it, but somebody tells you, oh, yeah, you're saved. I, you No, you need to know that you know that you know that you belong Amen. to the Lord. Amen. The Word of God says that if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that he died for our sins on the cross, he went to hell, he paid the penalty, and he rose again. You shall be saved, but you have to believe it in your heart. You can tell me all day long here. But God says, I know the intent, the thoughts. He knows. You can fool a person. I always tell people when they come up, and they're a little hesitant about receiving Jesus, I tell them, don't do it for me. Because I'm going to heaven. I know where I'm going. you got to do this because you want it. Because you might not have the full understanding of everything that God has for your life, but you know that something's been happening to you that's drawing you to him more and more and more. And you need more of him and you want more of him. And you're finding out how to get to him. And the first step is receiving him as your Lord and Savior. The second step is to keep on coming. Keep on coming. I got gotcha. you. Keep your eyes on me, says Jesus. Keep your eyes on me. It says letting go of those things behind and pressing on. You got to press. You got to press. Pressing on to the high call of God in Christ Jesus. So you got to stay focused on the high call of God in Christ Jesus. So we have to be in Christ in order to be able to let go of those things behind us, right? in order to press on to the high call of God. And you have to be in Christ Jesus. Well, the first step to being in Christ Jesus is stepping into Christ Jesus. It says in John 14 that I am in you, says Jesus, and you are in me, and I am in the Father. We become one. It says in Ezekiel 36 that when... You receive Jesus. What happens is you're born with a dark spirit because we're spirit beings in bodies with a soul, mind, will, and emotion. We're spirit beings in these fleshly bodies with a soul, which is your mind, will, and emotions. But when you receive Jesus, you get a new spirit, says the Lord. The Word of God says you get a new spirit. Why would you need a new spirit? Because the spirit we're dark, born with is dark. It's with sin. When you receive Christ, all of a sudden it's almost like, you know, you just go, the blood of cross, the blood of Jesus goes, and all the darkness is underneath that blood, and all this becomes white and without sin. And so now I stand before God without sin. New spirit. And then it says that the spirit of the living God himself will come and join my spirit. And we become one. That's the spirit that causes us to change. The spirit of God. Amen? And he says that I will give you a new heart. I'll take that heart of flesh out, which means you can't feel anymore and you're angry and you're this and you're that. Your heart is exploded. Let me have that heart and I will give you a new heart, says the Lord. He will if you want it. Amen? Amen. 
This is the gospel of the ministry of Jesus Christ, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and it is meant for you to take out, once you've received it, the fullness of him and give it to other people because they are hurting. They don't know where to go, and they're afraid of the church because the church is full of hurting people, and hurting people end up hurting people, and then they blame it on the church because the devil is a liar. Yes. I agree there's churches out there that do not believe in the Trinity. I believe that there's churches out there that are dark. I do believe that. But God has given us what is called a spirit of discernment, which is this Holy Spirit in us to let us know if we are in a God-fearing, believing <coughs> gospel of Jesus Christ church or not. And if you find it, you need to get planted and rooted and start to grow up in the things of God because he just wants to pour his love and his life into you to bring you to the plan that he has. I know the thoughts I have for you, says the Lord. They are good. Right. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. And I've come to bring you back from captivity today. Maybe some of you don't even know him to be brought back from captivity. But regardless, he's come to set the captives free. He's come to set the captives free. So, Father, I thank you. And I just praise your holy name. I pray you take the word out by the spirit that we each heard it today in our own language. Shay, we're going to sing Holy Spirit. Father, I pray that you move in this house like never before. That those that have walked away from you, God, that they come running back. Those that don't know you, Lord. That they would come before you today and say, I want to be your son or your daughter. I might not have all the answers, but I know there's hope in you and that's where I need to put it. So God, I just thank you for what you're doing in the hearts of the men and women here. Hey, what's your name? Um, Daniel. Daniel. So while I was preaching, um, I just heard the Lord say to come and encourage you. And God says that in your life and your lifestyle, you've not had a lot of encouragement. And um, God says that that wasn't of him. And sometimes you've hollered out to God and saying, why God? Why me? Why is my life this way? And the Lord says it's because the enemy has a scheme against all of our lives. And he wants you to know that today. So I'm encouraging you. And I want you to know that you're loved. Well, you might not feel like it sometimes, and, but you're searching for it. The love that you've encountered has been very painful. And God says the love that he has is very prosperous for you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. <coughs> Thank you, God. So, um, I think it's Marjorie. Is that what you go by is Marjorie? Marge. Okay, so Marge. Um, I just want you to know that God says that you're not being left behind. And sometimes you feel like you're being left behind, that you're just kind of out there floating and don't really know where you're going to fit in and where you're going to belong. But God says this is a time of rest for you and a time of healing for you. But he says, don't fear it. You're not going to be left behind. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And Edie, 
even for you, God says that sometimes you feel like you're left out. Your life is really busy. You've been faithful to him. You've been faithful to the church. You've been faithful to me. The church has grown so much, and we've had people in and out of here for the last several years. And God says you're not forgotten. Your prayers are heard. If it wasn't for those prayers, the foundations of this church wouldn't even be here. God says it's not forgotten. He says even though you sit back quietly and you don't complain and you don't try to be seen, God says he sees you. And God says that he has not forgotten the promise that he's made for, to you from him. He says, hang on, daughter, it's coming. Hang on, it's coming. Let me see your hand. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I just break off any discouragement in Jesus' name, just breaking it off, shutting the mouth of the liar now in Jesus' name, and, Lord, just imparting nothing but faith and triumph in the name of Jesus. I call this woman to roar. Father, I call forth the lioness of Jesus Christ in her to roar. Lord, as she brings forth the prayers and the healing, God, that you have placed in these hands because it's you, God, and it's your love that, Father, Father, you just begin to manifest it to a greater degree and that you give Edie insight, a greater insight, a greater ability to see Father God and that she will be bold enough to step out and go over and do what you're asking her to do, God. And just, um, Father, in that, the prosperity of prayer coming through. I thank you, God, that the prayers of a righteous man prevails much in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <laughs> Hallelujah. So um, I'm going to have you turn the lights down for me just a little bit. I'm going to have everybody stand up for me a second, if you would. Um, just stay where you're at for just a moment. And Tammy, can you pull down that? Okay, so what I want to do is um, I just want to, um, Dan, can you step up over here for me? Okay, Marcy, can you step over? up over here for me. Okay, this is what I want to do. Okay. <coughs> I want to invite you before I have everybody step in. Those of you that have never received Christ before and you you feel that pull in, inside and it almost feels like anxiety but it's not. It's the Holy Spirit and He's trying to draw you out into life draw you out of darkness and into life. And so if that's you, I want to give you opportunity to step out. So hang on just a second because I'm not going to uh, just do that. I'm going to bring others out with you. And those of you that need to be brought back from captivity, back into the place that you need to be with Jesus Christ, I want you now to step out. And those of you that need Jesus, please step out in the center aisle and come up and either go to Dan or Marcy. Both of them are anointed by God. Just go ahead and go right to them. Anybody else before we start singing? I know there's more. Okay, so nobody's been held captive. I don't believe you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Right here. Yep, stay right here. Good, good, good. Yep, stay right there. Perfect. Anybody else? You can still come up even after uh, we start singing, because some of you will, because that's usually what happens. But God says that if you confess me before man, I will confess you before my Father. And even this is a confession before uh, man, which means Jesus is confessing you before the Father. Turn that on real low for me for a minute. Go ahead, Chase, start it low. Yes, yes. Yep, just come on forward. I'm going to invite you to come forward. Yes, good. Good. It's a line right here and a line right here. Awesome. Perfect. Uh, wait, I want you to get up with Dan and pray with Dan. Tammy, will you come up with Marcy, please? Okay, everybody else step out. Sharon, come out here, please, and make sure that everybody gets where they need to be. Now, if anybody else needs prayer, line here and line here. Let's get her done. Line, line. Okay, come on, guys. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come here, Shelly. Stand in the middle.
Phoebe. Catch. No. Anybody else need prayer? We got three lines, so you won't have to wait real long. Just come up here, and we'll make sure you get prayed for. want you to know that otherwise you guys we're going to pray and you'll be dismissed for fellowship next door so father we thank you and we praise you we ask god that your face shine upon each person here tonight today this morning that you bless them and keep them and god that you would just continue lord to have your way in our lives and change us from the inside out we love you lord we worship you god in Jesus' name, all God's people said, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. We had an election this week, or many elections this week, and without warning, the Democrats were able to win the election. 
so many people to vote for without getting the ballot stuff. I was asked, how a Christian could vote for a certain person? Of all people who have choose from well, that's a really, excuse me, a big question, how a Christian could vote that way. So I went around the block just saying, well, I don't want to speak for me, but trying to speak for a couple of people. <coughs> this is what I did. And the gentleman gave me the answer. I thought I was political in the world of the answer. I tried it again. Finally, as I was, I had to go, and he asked me one more time, and I said, the word pray for Christians, and I'm supposed to be following Christ. Right away, for whatever reason, I keep coming back to the one scripture, John 8, 1 to 11, where Jesus uh, was confronted with the woman caught in adultery. Mm -hmm. I'm learning that <clears throat> with that scripture, there are so many things we're learning. In the essence that Jesus was backed into a corner and had to give an answer, and not and, and glorify God with his answer. Without him so much saying it, that's what they said about Jesus. I guess he knelt down and started moving. And that just came to me. So uh, I called the gentleman, I'll see him next week. And that I'd like him to read that before we further discuss it. My thought was, let's not concern ourselves too much with the ways of this world and what's going on in this world. Let's keep our focus on God. And that's what I think a Christian would do. We should do. Getting to uh, how we vote, I think we should pray about it.